Alright, so guys, welcome back again to my channel. Today, I'm going to give you one of the series of an exclusive interview with a very big boss here. He is a diplomat from Zambia, and he's also doing his PhD at the University of Malaya. So, we want to interview him. Okay, viewers, finally, we have been able to get our big guest for today. So, you can see. He's a big man, he's a big boss, a great opportunity to interview him. This is the Secretary of Education. Okay, thank you so much, sir, for having us. Thank you. So, viewers, here we are at this uh, exclusive interview. And uh, I'm privileged to have uh, Mr. Usango Usasa on the couch today. So, uh, good afternoon, Mr. Usango Usasa. Very good afternoon. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome to Unique Reviews and Experiences Malaysia. Uh, may we just know a brief about you, sir? Uh, yeah, um, uh, my name is uh, Sam Mutaza. Um, I'm the first secretary for education at uh, Zambia High Committee uh, in Malaysia. And um, at the same time, I'm a PhD student in West Malaya. Um, also, I'm serving as the, the president of the African uh, Association. Uh, Malaya. Uh, maybe in brief, uh, that is me. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, okay, so uh, may you tell us more about what you do? What do you do in Malaysia? Why are you here? Yeah, um, I came to Malaysia for work as a diplomat. Oh, wow. Yes, I was uh, appointed uh, to serve as a uh, first secretary of education. Uh, that was uh, 2012. Okay. And, um, I've been here from that time, and uh, I've done my master's here, oh. um, uh, Open University in uh, Malaysia. Sure. Sure. Then um, I decided to join UM for my PhD, oh, that's uh, nice. which I'm finalizing. Oh, that's nice. So you've been in Malaysia for like uh, almost... I, I've, been here, I've been here for, for six plus six years. Blocks. Yes, six I, uh, my coming here was for work, but for I, work. I thought maybe I should make use of the opportunity of being here to also pursue my studies. Yes, yes otherwise, uh, I mean, the main reason I'm here is uh, to serve Zambia, to serve Zambia. Uh, especially uh, the students uh, from Zambia who are here, and also to create um, uh, collaboration between uh, uh, our education in Zambia and uh, the Malaysia. Oh, that's beautiful. So this is what I do. That's beautiful. Okay, so Zambians are uh, watching everywhere and the gems of in Malaysia. So we have caught a big fish today. <laughs> oh, really? Thank you. So <laughs> you please Thank try you. to contact him anytime at the uh, High Commission of uh, Zambia. Am I right? Okay, sir. So, sir, uh, can you just uh, kindly enlighten the audience on how your journey to Malaysia came about? Um, well, um, I didn't have actually plan to come to Malaysia. I think, uh, first of all, I have to acknowledge that uh, it was through the grace of God. Mm. Um, I was working as a teacher uh, uh, back home, uh, maybe for five years. Before I joined, uh, uh, before I joined into, uh, before I joined politics, mm. yes, I resigned, uh, became a politician, and uh, you know, um, it so happened that uh, the opportunity came when I really accepted, uh, considering that uh, my services were required. I've been here to do the job that I was assigned uh, to do. So I came here for uh, for work. That was the primary purpose. Okay. Studies, I think uh, that was secondary. Yes, I saw the opportunity looking at the education system here and uh, also the flexibility. Yes, for me to be able to balance up work with studies. And then uh, I decided that in my free time I should be studying. Mm. That's a wise one. Yeah, in my free time I should be studying, 
not only myself, my wife as well, a bachelor of psychology, and she's doing her master's for what she's remaining in the semester. Wow. So it was a plan as a family. So <laughs> okay. just do something that we you know uh, uh, improve our our welfare. That's so beautiful. Thank you very much, sir. That's so great. I believe many people have been encouraged by this uh, uh, choice you have made, and it's really rewarding. I believe so. Or when did you start your PhD program, sir? Uh, well, I started, I embarked on, on the PhD, I think, um, uh, precisely 2015. I'm about to complete. I've done most of the things. Uh, what is remaining now is uh, the candidature defense, okay. uh, which I should be doing maybe uh, next week or the other week. So, may I know what actually prompted you to study at UM? What attracted you? Yeah, what, uh, what prompted me actually to switch? University of Malaya, I looked at the, um, the credibility of the, the institution. Uh, University of Malaya is um, among the, um, the best universities so far, not only in Southeast Asia but in the world. Currently, it's right uh, 86th, right, I think. 86th, yeah. So, 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 so that prompted me, especially that I've been, you know, um, what I really wanted was to do uh, more of research. research. Yes. So when I looked at University of Malaya, I really saw a university uh, that would meet uh, my expectations. Yes. expectations. Okay. So, sir, uh, do you think it's worth coming down here all the way from Africa? Uh, yes, I would say yes, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's worth coming down to Malaysia um, for some reasons. Uh, maybe the best reason is that uh, when you compare Malaysia with some African countries, mm. uh, from the time we got our independence, uh, you find that uh, most of the African countries were doing much better. Mm. Yes, but now when um, you look at the progress that uh, has been made, especially in the uh, educational sector. Yes. yes of, of, of course, there are, there are policies that uh, were implemented. I'll maybe mention two or three. Um, one of them is the internationalization of higher education policy that was enacted in 2011. Uh, this policy has really, you know, um, worked well for Malaysia. For which we have seen, um, uh, you know, universities mushrooming. Mm. Um, for example, um, in, the, in that policy, the country was aspiring for, you know, attracting more foreign investors either to partner or to open up, to set up branches. Mm. Yes. So when you look at um, the universities that are here now in Malaysia. How things have worked. I think it's a good idea for students to come and learn the, uh, the Malaysian model. How it has you know, how, it, how it has helped, so that you know we carry the same knowledge. Maybe we use it as well to develop our systems. But I think it's worth it to come to Malaysia, especially that uh, Malaysia is still as well a developing country. Okay. We have a lot to uh, to learn from okay. from, from, from Malaysia. Yeah. That's so great. Okay, so sir, I would like to know, like, uh, how were you able to cope with your job and the PhD research? Because I think this is uh, kind of a critical. Yeah, jobs. yeah. Thank you very much, and uh, so that's that's a very nice question. Um, you know, in life, mm. when you are when you are ambitious to achieve something, you really have to devote time. Mm. You have to apportion your time properly. Uh, like in my case, of course, it hasn't been easy. Because it's not only work we are talking about. I'm also a father of four. Wow. So, meaning family. I had to balance family, work, and studies. Yeah, but of course, um, mainly I used to do my studies, or I do my studies uh, in the evenings. 
especially uh, maybe on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I, I make sure that I sleep less. Maybe I sleep only for two, three hours. The rest of the day, I have to be on my computer to do my research. I have to be out there to do data collection. Uh, or maybe I have to reach out to uh, friends who are doing the research to learn uh, one or two things, or maybe to exchange some ideas on, on, on the research. So I think um, it wasn't quite easy. It's, it's been a, a hectic. Journey, but at the end of it, this is what we have to do, all of us, and uh, I'm happy it has really worked and it's, it's, it's working. It's great. So, what is very important when you invite on something, you have to set your objectives. And when you set the objectives, they have to be achievable objectives. You have to ask yourself, are you ready to do the studies? Are you ready to do what you intend? Once you answer those questions yourself, then your mind will be fed with positive that you can do and you are going to do it. I think maybe in summary, I fed my mind with the positive to say I can do it and I'll do it. So, that's true. Okay, thank you very much, sir. And so, sir, regarding your appointment as the president of the mass organization in the uh, University of Malaya, can you tell us about the experiences you have gained so far? Uh, thank you very much, yes. Um, as um, the Umasa president, of course, I've learned uh, um, uh, a lot of things. Uh, maybe just to give uh, a bit of background, that um, that wasn't the first uh, appointment that I've seen so far. Um, back home when I was doing my, my undergraduate, I served as a um, as the provincial chairperson for Western Province mm. uh, in a very, very big university back home. Wow. And they have also served as a student leader when I was doing my uh, certificate in teaching before I embarked on the degree. So, uh, my experience with the master is that um, we need to, uh, to work together as African students. I'm now talking at the student. Exactly. <laughs> Since it's about Masa. Masa. Yeah. So my, my, my experience has been too good um, well, with um, the union. Um, I think the union members were, were cooperative or are very cooperative. But you know, of course, when you start something from the scratch, you really have to put a lot of um, Efforts and make sure that like, um, uh, things are put uh, in the right direction. Uh, so, what we have done so far, um, we came up with the constitution, the committee is in that, it's still there, and uh, the only challenge we are having now is uh, with uh, the membership. Mm -hmm. Because for every association or union to be alive, there has to be a resource base. You need funds. So we've been having challenges, especially with the funds. So we've been running a union which is cashless in short. There are no funds, we have to keep it to our pockets as uh, uh, union uh, leaders. But of course, um, we saw some students you know, um, um, appreciating the union, the way it was, uh, maybe the way it's, it's, it's coming up. Right I'm seeing something great to, to come, especially uh, when we will hold our, our Congress. Oh, wow. It was for our union, we were appointed. The, the current mem membership was appointed just to spearhead the formation of this uh, association. So we are looking forward uh, uh, to that time when everyone will come together and hold the election so that we could have um, the leadership that will be there know, that should be recognized by, by everyone. So for us, we have done our part. Uh, to put things on the ground, the constitution is there, the membership, and so on. So we are looking forward, maybe, to such a time when the mandate will be given out to 
those uh, Asha dealers, dealers through the ballot. That's so great. Okay. Uh, so, sir, apart from your primary job and your PhD, uh, do you have any other ambitions, perhaps maybe in your country or in your country? Um, yes, I would say um, I have ambitions. Okay. Uh, I have an ambition. I think um, it's not something that I should hide. It's something that is in the public domain. Mm. It's been there. I'm a political participant. Oh, wow. Yeah, what prompted me maybe uh, to join politics? That was um, sometime in 2010 when I was uh, serving as a primary school teacher. I, I, I really had, you know, had it in, in, uh, in my heart. Like maybe one day I should represent the people. Uh, especially the, uh, in my village where I come okay. from, Papa Constituents. I was born there, I grew up there, and uh, I've experienced the challenges that I experienced. So I thought maybe having been part or having been uh, brought up there, maybe I could be uh, an ideal person to find uh, solutions, solution to the main challenges that are being faced. Uh, so in 2010, in 2010, I made a decision. I, I joined uh, by then uh, the opposition party by then. Okay. Uh, that was uh, the patriotic front. Okay. Uh, and I was adopted to contest as a candidate in 2011. Of course, uh, we had we had challenges with the resources. No. Uh, opposition politics is always challenging. So, mm -hmm. so I didn't make it, I lost. Oh. Of course, people, major complaints, I, concerns that I got from people are that uh, maybe I was young. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what they were saying. But now they are calling me, they're saying, I'm ripe, I'm ripe. I'm ripe. <laughs> but I, so I'm just trying to put pieces together and also do. Consultations with uh, my family, with my friends, to see whether I can go ahead in uh, 21. Otherwise, uh, I'm prepared and ready for it. Okay. Yes. That's very good. We wish you the best Thank you. in your political uh, career. Okay, so, sir, can you tell us how you intend to actually make a difference? If given the privilege to serve the people. Uh, thank you very much. The difference that I'll make um, in Rwanda, I have seen, um, for me, in my approach, I, I don't criticize what others have done. I think we have different approaches, all of us. I have seen what maybe start with my father was a name. He served as an MP in the same constituency of 1991. Uh, then, um, uh, Honorable Stephen Majata uh, won the election in 2021 and uh, he served, he did what he could. After Honorable Stephen Majata, Honorable um, Joseph Miyarimata also served. But currently, we have Honorable Makoto Chikote. He is doing his part. I think for me, the difference that I would make is um, I'm one of the people that fought for that constituency in the district. And I have a picture of how I want Lopa to be, to be, to gain its status as a district. When I look at my constituents now, though it was, it was declared a district, nothing much has been done. I would Example uh, sanitation, it's a district, but people still drink water from the, uh, from the rivers, from the ports. So, this is one thing that I would really want to see uh, change. We have to have, uh, 
uh, we have to lobby for the water and sewerage to move in so that people can, uh, you know, start enjoying the status of the process being a district. Of course, power is already there. The, the other thing that um, um, I want to see change, the bomber, the, the, the district offices, I think, Although I say that I don't want to criticize anyone, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to criticize only for <laughs> on, on a few things that I feel really mistakes, mistakes were made. The, 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 the district offices, it was a mistake for the district offices to be put where they are now, in the Kaum, in an area called Kaum. For me, I, you know, what I wanted to see was for our development in the district, you know, to be put along the Machile Road. Mm. Though that mistake was made, I still have a solution. And this solution is that for every newly created district, mm. there was a special package that was given. Number one, the district offices, a high school and modern market. So for me, what I'm going to do or what I intend to do, I have to move, since the modern market hasn't been built yet, I want to move the modern market to Machile Road. Because Machile Road, that is the main road in our uh, district. That is the road that holds uh, so much of uh, you know, economic activities. Because it connects uh, Luamba to Sesheke and also Namibia. So once we put our market there and uh, we start lobbying for that road to be worked on, we have our market there and then at a place called Kamkeni, that is where we are going to put our high school. The other, in, in the package as well, there is a district hospital. Okay. So the reason why we we'll put our market at Kamkeni, I mean the high school at Kamkeni, so that we start thinking, we start, you know, we start now. Uh, 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 thinking of how to take power to places like Nyambi 1, Nyambi 2, mm. also Namando and Muro. So for the district hospital, for me, I, because I, I want to impose, I want to impose, I will put everything in, in consultation with the people. The district hospital, this one we are supposed to have it either in Nyambi or in Muro. In Luapa Central, already we have that hospital that was, you know, uh, built by the missionaries. All we need to do is just to improve a few things. Otherwise, the facility is already there. So there is no way we can put another hospital right there. For other areas like Mbanyutu, Kenga, and Meirui, these are along the road and the hospitals are near. So we have to think of the people that are further, especially in the remote, Area. That's where we have to target. So, I think also for a change, given the opportunity, I think I won't hide from the people. I will, I will always make myself available uh, to the people so that uh, we share notes. Uh, I get uh, really ideas from them on what we need to do together. And also I update them on what I feel we can do. For example, maybe we can be having things like meet, uh, meet the member of parliament, uh, lunch on, meet the member of parliament, cry. You know, at such fora, that's where now I would, you know, uh, interact with the people um, and get their views, learn from them really what we need to do and also give an update to them on what I'm planning to do or what we are doing. It's very great. That's a very exclusive one. Okay. So, uh, sir, we would like to know, uh, because we are aware that you came here with your family. Yeah, you said something, you mentioned something like that at the beginning of this interview. Yes. So, we would like to know, for those who may want to also adopt the method you have used, in terms of expenditures, what does it feel like to have one's family here in Malaysia? Um, well, I should say it's moderate in terms of, um, in, in, in 
terms of the, 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 the living cost. Um, what is expensive in Malaysia is um, the education for the kids. Wow. Um, I'll give an example. My children were at um, Tiara International School, that's where they were doing their, their, their studies. Um, for every child I was paying, I have four. Okay. Three boys, one girl. So I was paying about 10,000 ringgit per term. Wow. Per ah, child. Yeah, that is per term. So term. in a year per child, I was spending about 10,000 ringgit. So education for children is expensive. University education is slightly cheaper. Damn. When I compare to what, I, to what I've been paying as a PhD student, I think I've, I've, I've been paying much, much, much less than uh, what they pay. Yes, what? Yes. Then also the other thing that is expensive, I think it's um, the medication. I'm sure you know about uh, yeah. the, the dengue fever. I remember one time when my wife uh, uh, had dengue, my wife and my daughter, for which I was required to pay security deposit to the hospital of 5,000. So health is expensive, education is expensive. Uh, depending on which school you want to take your children to, of course there are there are cheaper schools like maybe uh, the government schools. Those 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 are, are, are cheaper if not free, as you say. But the only challenge we got to take our children to such school was uh, usually. Uh, the teaching is done in the local language. I'm sure you are aware there are three types of uh, Yeah, there are three types of schools. We have the national schools and the national type schools. I'm sure you will find us. The national schools, these are schools that teach in Bahasa Malay. Then the national type schools, uh, these are schools for the Chinese and uh, India and, and Indians. So usually uh, everything is, is taught uh, in the local language. That gives us no option but to take our children to international, to international school where uh, English is used as a medium of instruction. Hmm. That's serious. Okay. Uh, thank you for that uh, information, sir. Okay, sir. So, I would like to know you have been in Malaysia for a great period of time now, and uh, you have interacted with a lot of people from different fields. Uh, what is your sincere say about Malaysia's acceptance and integration of the African race? Well, uh, thank you very much. And um, indeed, I've been interacted with a lot of people from uh, various fields, uh, be it uh, maybe in academics, be it um, at a social level, maybe uh, in social places. Uh, we have met different people and. Uh, um, really, I would say Malaysia is a, is a great country. Uh, all one has to do is uh, to follow the, the procedure. Because you know, when you are in a foreign country, you have to uh, just understand what policies are there, what is required of you to do. And once you follow, you meet all the requirements. Uh, I don't see Malaysia needs to be. Uh, very bad people. Of course, in every society, you find there are those uh, who are good. Well, you would also meet people who are who are bad. So, yes. So I, I I wouldn't put it in general terms that uh, Malaysians are racist. I wouldn't put it that way. But I would say there are people again, especially those who have never travelled, yeah. those who have never seen. So they would say uh, things like uh, Africans are poor, you are not welcome into our country. There are those people. But again, there are, there are those who have traveled, those who understand that uh, we live in, um, 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 in one world and we are all human beings. They will always speak good about uh, an African. Yeah, but what is important is um, we just have to, uh, to really to really appreciate that um, um, we
we are here uh, to represent our continent and uh, we have to portray a good picture of our continent. That is what we have to do. Because uh, some of the Malaysians, what they feel is that Africa is a, is a country. Uh, and uh, I would give this as, as a reference point to a few that have interacted with. Uh, some of them say, treat, treat Africa as Nigeria. <laughs> so I have heard uh, such before. So what I would say as, uh, as students, and this is my message to you, uh, University of Malaya students, um, let us just give uh, a, a very good picture of our continent. Uh, let us know that uh, when we are there as students, of course we could be there on our own, but we are, we are representing a big picture. So what we do, people would use it against those who uh, would be willing to come for their studies at the uh, University of Malaya or another university. So generally I think Malaysia is a good country. They are good people. What is important is for us to follow uh, their policies, for us to follow what, they, what is required of us, for us to uh, portray a good image of ourselves, of our countries. And uh, I think that's what I, that's what I feel. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. So, sir, uh, we are coming right on to the end of the interview. I would like to know your advice for those who are planning to visit Malaysia, uh, especially for higher education. Also, you can blend it also with uh, the next question. That's uh, for those who, Africans in particular, who are planning to come to Malaysia in search of uh, greener pastures. All right. Okay. Uh, maybe let, let me start with the, the, the earlier one. Okay. Uh, my advice to those willing to come to Malaysia for studies. My advice is that. Um, uh, before you come, uh, check yourself. Are you really uh, in good standing? How is your behavior? Mm. Because this is this is a country uh, whereby um, number one, they don't entertain those who use uh, who, who abuse drugs, mm. drugs like cannabis. Number two. You have to do your medical checkups before you come. This is a country whereby when you come as a student, whether you have done the medicals in your country, you still have to do the medicals here. And what they focus on, uh, HIV, STIs, and also drugs. So before you even waste your, your money to travel, you have to do the right things to have yourself checked. Because whether you do the medicals in your country and maybe you bribe someone to give you the uh, wrong give you good results. When you come here, it's a requirement you still have to do the medicals. So that is number one. Mm. Number two, when you come to Malaysia, you have to be someone who has really come to do the studies. Yes, because even attendance. Class attendance is also uh, is also uh, 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 considered when renewing your, 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 your visa. You have to attend classes at least eighty percent. Less than eighty percent, you are out. They won't even renew your visa. And the, also, you have to you have to make sure that you have enough resources because. Of course, when you come to a foreign country like this one, it's, it's each one for, for, for him or for herself. So you have to be really a person who has saved enough resources so that along the way you don't find yourself uh, in a very uh, desperate or destitute uh, situation. So this is my advice to those um, willing to come uh, to Malaysia. And maybe to tackle the other one, uh, my advice for those uh, um, willing to come to Malaysia for Prima Pastures. I think I'm one of the people that wouldn't I even encourage to bring the animal because we have our country, our continent, Africa, that we 
have to think about. For me, I would encourage someone to come and do the studies, learn the skills, gain the knowledge, and take everything back to Africa. Because as Africa, we are now talking of industrialization. Uh, we are a great continent. It's only that um, maybe we haven't yet realized our potential. But we are getting there. So what is important for every person, even myself, uh, uh, given even a bigger position in whichever country, because I, I'm now almost having my PhD, I, I, I won't accept. Because in my heart, it's Africa. In my heart, it's Africa. I have a lot that I've learned here that I really have to, uh, yes, to, yes, yeah. Because let us talk of, uh, of our children as well. Let us talk of the generation, the future generation. That's what we have to do. It's us who should set the ball rolling. Otherwise, if, you, if we keep on saying, no, we'll develop in the future, we we'll will develop no other person. These are the people that are going to Africa, maybe for mining or for other businesses. They are going there as business people just to get the resources. They are not going there to develop. <laughs> they are going there to get what they want to get. And once they get what they want to get, they are developing their countries. So the only people that can develop Africa is ourselves, as the Africans. So I wouldn't encourage someone to even come here for greener pastures. We already have greener pastures in our, in our continent. So what is important? Let us think of our continent. Very very exclusive. Very exclusive. Okay, it's been a long one. Uh, so finally, sir, can you just briefly, critically summarize your final thoughts concerning the African country's relationship with the Malaysian government in establishing and promoting businesses and global marketing within the two? Uh, All right. Oh, um. I thank you. Um, the fact that um, we have uh, uh, we have African uh, missions in Malaysia, and also Malaysia has uh, missions in in Africa, shows that there is a, a, a big relationship between uh, 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 Africa and uh, Malaysia, and. Um, there is so much uh, going on in terms of business, in terms of uh, bi bi bilateral relations. Um, I, I think maybe what I would advise, or maybe just my thoughts, is that uh, going forward, um, African countries should avoid relationships whereby. Uh, I, I won't mention any country, you know, I'm not in that position. But, you know, what, what I would like to see is a situation whereby when people are at the negotiating table, the negotiations should be 50 50 in terms of benefit. For example, um, like when you enter into a relationship with, you know, a, a, a country which is almost a superpower. And you agree in terms of free trade, whereby people there in that country can go to your country to do business freely, and your people can go and do business freely. You will find that usually it doesn't, it doesn't balance up well because the super country will always have people with money. Mm. So they can easily come and exploit the natural resources and go back. But for our people, because of the finances, they can't go and exploit the resources in the other country. So I think somehow we have to be very careful when we talk of uh, relationships in terms of trade. We have to, number one, think of how to protect our natural resources. Because that's what God has given us and it has to be there to help even our children. Then if we let um, People just come and exploit, and uh, after 10 years, um, a 
everything is exploited and maybe you find that such a relationship will never be there again because they will have now nothing to benefit. So I would say we just have to be careful. Of course, Malaysia is um, uh, it, it, it's, it's also a good partner because uh, this is when Malaysia is actually up. I'm seeing the Malaysians finding out more about Africa. Yes, majority of the Malaysians haven't traveled much, especially they haven't explored Africa much. So, in the years I've been here, I've been hearing now uh, a few of, a few of them trying to find out the business opportunities, what they can do, and so on. So, I think so far the relationship is good. It's good. Thank you very much, sir, for giving us all these uh, exclusive uh, points. Indeed, we have learned a lot today. And uh, I don't know what you like to tell the viewers outside. Finally, just give a shout out to them. All right. Them. Okay. Thank you for coming for, uh, for this interview. And uh, I'm grateful uh, that you came. I uh, mean, what I would um, say to the viewers. Uh, to my colleagues, uh, University of Malaya students, uh, especially Africans, uh, let us work hard. We, we have um, a big burden behind us, and that is the global appointment. I know uh, that many of us Africans today, when we go out, all we think about is to remain in those countries we have gone. But let us remember, Africa is our country. And no one else would think of developing Africa. The people that are going to Africa from different continents, they are not going there to develop. They are going there to get what they want to get and develop their countries. So for us, we have to develop our, 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 our Africa. No one will make it a paradise. Once we make Africa a paradise, ourselves, we'll be doing that for our children. We'll be doing that for the future generation. So the same way that uh, we come out here to do our studies, why can't we turn the table so that in the future we start seeing people from Malaysia going to do their studies in Africa? Mm. In the future we see people from Europe going to do their studies in our universities. This is what we have to think of. So for you colleagues who are doing your PhDs, for you colleagues who are doing your masters, for you colleagues who are doing your degrees, this is the only challenge that I can give with you. Let us think of our, 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 our concrete, our concerted effort. If we put together everything we have learned, we, we can do better things. There is nothing that we can fail to do. If they, can, if they have managed to do it, are we not human beings to also uh, manage to? I think this is the challenge I'm giving to not only the students who are studying here in Malaysia, I'm also giving this challenge to many other Africans who are in Europe, who are in the US, who are all over the world. Think of Africa. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very, very much. Uh, we have come to the end of this interview. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, please. Just put it down below. I'm also going to share the email of uh, our guests today so that uh, maybe if you have any other pressing needs or information you may want to get about the Zambian uh, Commission and especially this area is into educational uh, yes. aspect of the Commission here. Thank you very much once again, sir. Thank you.